On the south side leaves one person hurt. What we're learning about the cause behind those flames this noon. Civic Park at Hemisphere, closer to being a reality. A look at today's groundbreaking event coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And we start with breaking news. A U.S. Supreme Court justice is ready to retire. Justice Stephen Breyer plans to retire after serving more than two decades on the high court. The 83-year-old has been a consistent liberal vote on the court since he was sworn into office back in 1994. Then-President Bill Clinton nominated him to the bench. Breyer is expected to stay on until the end of the term and until Congress confirms his replacement. His retirement would give President Biden a chance to nominate a new liberal voice to the court for the first time since Justice Elena Kagan was sworn in back in 2010. And it may be tough to imagine, but San Antonio police say two boys unleashed a violent attack on their own mother. They say the 12 and 16 year old stabbed her and then beat her with a baseball bat. It happened at their far west side apartment in the 8000 block of West Military. As Katrina Weber reports, police still don't know the reason for the violence. A second floor unit at the Castle Ridge Apartments was getting more than a second look from San Antonio police. They watched over it until investigators could search it for clues related to what they believed was a shocking case of family violence. Officers answering a woman's call for help around 5 this morning found her stabbed and beaten inside that home. They say the suspects in this case were her own sons, 12 and 16 years old. Police found the older boy still inside the apartment but had to search for the 12-year-old who had run away. Before long, they found him, then took both children into custody. Police say they not only found the suspects close by, they also found a key piece of evidence. They say they found a bat used in the attack tucked away under one of these tables. Officers told us the mother was in critical condition as she was rushed to a hospital. They say she was in no condition to talk and that they still don't know the reason why life inside that apartment took such a violent turn. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Busy morning for fire crews battling flames at homes on the south and southeast sides of town. First on Keats Street, one person hurt after a fire broke out at a home. According to firefighters, it started around 845 this morning, not far from Division Avenue and Interstate 35. At the scene, crews say flames were coming from both the windows and the roof of the home. A lieutenant with the San Antonio Fire Department says someone inside the home lit a warmer next to a mattress trying to fight off the cold, but that mattress caught fire. That person was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. An SUV next to the house was also destroyed by the flames. And San Antonio crews had a tough time getting to a fire inside a home on the city's southeast side late last night. It happened around 930 in the 4300 block of Roland Avenue, east of Southside Lions Park. Firefighters arrived to find the fire in the kitchen. However, the home was crowded with items inside, so they had a tough time getting to those flames. The fire spread into the basement of one of the homes before firefighters were finally able to access the fire and put it out. No one was hurt. And a day's long search comes to an end after police arrested a man who they accused of being involved in a shooting at an MLK gathering. As Jonathan Cotto reports, we're now learning new details about that arrest and the moments leading up to the shooting. This is 18-year-old O.L. Wallace. He was arrested on Tuesday at an apartment complex on Salado Creek Drive on the city's northeast side. Police say he fired a gun during a gathering January 17th outside a bar and restaurant on Spriggsdale Boulevard on the city's east side. The affidavit says Wallace was seen getting out of a white SUV and inside of that SUV were his mother and sister. It wasn't until after they left, Wallace allegedly shot off several rounds, killing 61-year-old Johnny Mobley and injuring four others. It was supposed to be a fun-filled day in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Dozens gathered in this parking lot in celebration of peace and unity. And police are still not sure why Wallace opened fire. But according to this arrest affidavit, a witness says she saw him target a young man standing next to a food truck. According to the report, that witness also telling police she recognized Wallace from an apartment complex where she used to live. In the police report, she told investigators she saw Wallace walking suspiciously with a gun under his arm before the shooting started. Wallace will be charged with one count of murder and four counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
And new at noon, after years of input from the local and state officials, the city of San Antonio finally broke ground for that Civic Park and Hemisphere project. It has been a collaborative effort since 2012. Our Jaffney Gray is out there right now. So Jaffney, a lot of excitement after it took so long to finally get to this point, I imagine. Yes, indeed, a ton of excitement, but just to give you an idea of how big this land is, check this out. We had about 200 people, including residents and community leaders, gather for what the city is calling a monumental moment. Phase one of this $27 million voter approved project will consist of five acres of public parking, trees, shallow interactive water areas, and a great lawn that could hold up to 15,000 people for large events. Now, during the groundbreaking today, Mayor Ron Nirenberg spoke about Civic Park being a critical piece of San Antonio Park System and will increase downtown connectivity to all corners of the city. He said despite hitting several delays, such as the pandemic, it was worth the wait. As we head into, yes, year three of this pandemic, spaces like Hemisphere have become even more essential to the mental well-being, physical health, and connection of all of our residents. And Hemisphere's Civic Park is the great gathering place for our city's needs. Civic Park will also have free public Wi-Fi to increase the community broadband access and an expanded public restroom with a universal changing station for people with special needs. A Civic Park Phase 1 is slated to open by 2023, the fall of that year. Live from Civic Park, or what will soon be Civic Park, Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. And Girl Scouts have officially kicked off their cookie season. It's a tough time, but be sure to carry cash. Thousands of area Girl Scouts are receiving cookies to distribute to customers around San Antonio and 20 surrounding counties. Last year, they sold more than 1 million, 1 million boxes of Girl Scout cookies, and they expect this year's sales to be even bigger. Tiffany Huertas has a look at what type of skills they're learning along the way and what new cookie to look out for this year. 2,900 boxes. One after another, cars lined up at this warehouse in the northeast side of San Antonio to pick up Girl Scout cookies Wednesday morning. We're going to give 971 cases, which is roughly really 10,000. Christina Reagan came prepared with a moving truck to pick up cookies for her troop. These girls have already made their posters. They've already got their little signs ready for the booze. They are so excited. Soon you will see Girl Scouts selling cookies in front of your favorite neighborhood stores and restaurants. We are going to be able to be in front of more neighborhood stores than we were this time last year. Last year it was all about contactless porch delivery and online sales. The Girl Scouts are learning different skills. Check it out. Here on the box it tells you they're learning goal setting, decision making, money management, people skills, and business ethics. Helps them become more outgoing. They learn about budgeting. Alana Carmichael was first in line this morning to pick up this year's new cookie, Adventurefuls, a brownie inspired cookie with caramel flavored cream and a hint of sea salt. My parents tried them and my daughter tried them and they're, they're in love with them. So I ordered extras because I know they're going to go fast. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. We need some rain and there are a couple chances in the forecast. We'll take a look at the seven day forecast coming up. And also coming up, some big battles in girls' district basketball last night. Larry Ramirez put together the highlights for us in a few minutes. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The World Health Organization says new COVID cases have gone up 5% worldwide just in the last week. And some hospitals in the U.S. are still overwhelmed. The majority of patients are unvaccinated. Health officials are trying to fight vaccine misinformation, urging more Americans to get their shots. ABC's Rainer Roy has the latest. Coast to coast, 2,100 lives lost to COVID every day, the highest death rate in nearly a year. In Ohio, the National Guard now stepping in to help overwhelmed hospitals in Cincinnati, the state battling the second highest death rate in the country. Integra's health system in Oklahoma treating a record number of COVID patients. Officials say the majority are unvaccinated. This empty bed is now the only empty bed in the hospital and it's already spoken for because we have 22 more patients just like this 
they're trying to get up into rooms just like this. In Boston, 31-year-old DJ Ferguson was in line for a heart transplant, but his family says because he's not vaccinated, he's no longer eligible. He's not an anti-vaxxer. He just wants proof that it's not going to cause further harm in an already compromised body. Doctors say getting your shots is the best protection from severe COVID and death, especially for the immunocompromised. One thing that I continue to see posted a lot on social media is this idea that the vaccine is not doing anything anymore. Couldn't be less true. Vaccinated and boosted, both Chicagoans, remain half as likely to be diagnosed with COVID as unvaccinated Chicagoans. Meantime, the Biden administration officially withdrawing vaccination mandates for large businesses with more than 100 employees after the Supreme Court blocked vaccine or test requirements. Now, there are signs the Omicron variant could be loosening its grip on the U.S. New cases are dropping in more than half the country, and hospital admissions are down 8% in the last week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. We're outside this morning. It's, it's kind of cold because it's cloudy. Uh, what it happened to the sun? Man, I was, I wanted to go back and change. 50 <laughs> degrees right now, and I was thinking, you know, it's probably not going to warm up much because it's cloudy. You're right. It will a little bit. I, I do think we'll eventually see a little bit of sun, but it's taking some time. That clearing line is moving very slowly. Temperatures should eventually make it into the mid to maybe upper 50s this afternoon. The aquifer is down a tenth of a foot to 662.4 in your pollen count. More good news here. It looks like we may be seeing an end to mountain cedar season a little bit early. We'll take that. Boulder at 70, mountain cedar at 10. We'll talk about some small rain chances headed our way. Coming up. It seems like the sun is fighting the clouds and the clouds are winning. And the clouds are but winning. is that a fair fight? For now. For now. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of back and forth. It's been a tricky forecast the last couple of days. We ran into this issue yesterday. It was clear early in San Antonio, then the clouds moved in. We're kind of looking for the reverse today. We started off with clouds, maybe, maybe some sun this afternoon. Let's go outside for you. And we've got cloudy skies right now at the airport, 50 degrees. Dew point is at 39. There was a little bit of a wind chill earlier, but keep in mind once we get above 50 degrees, wind chill goes away. East northeasterly winds around nine miles per hour. Uh, here's a look at the cloud cover. And you can see where the edge of it is. San Antonio was on the dividing line yesterday. New Braunfels now in the sun, Gonzales in the sun, edge of the clouds trying to work a little bit closer to Eastern Bear County. We'll see where we end up today, but there are some breaks down to the south and east as well. I think it's possible that during the afternoon we will see a little bit of sun. 50 degrees at the airport, 52 Gonzales. Uh, it's 52 up in New Braunfels right now, 57 in Kennedy. Underneath the clouds, 54 Carissa Springs, 52 in Uvalde, and then 40s in the hill country. It stays cloudy out west today, that's for sure. Very few breaks there. As we look at the forecast, we should make it up to about 57 today with mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. 55 in New Braunfels, still in the 40s for the hill country. 47 uh, potentially the high there in Rock Springs, and you got upper 50s, but cloudy in places like Uvalde and Carrizo Springs. Clouds build back in tonight. We should drop into the low 40s, and then tomorrow it's overcast for everybody. Now to keep temperatures in check, mid 50s on your Thursday. But if you're hoping for some sun and warmer temperatures, it happens this weekend. It looks a lot better Saturday and Sunday. Here's the uh, big picture across the country, and I show you this because the wind chills up north are brutal. Negative eight in Chicago. That's what it feels like right now. Negative nine in Minneapolis. Earlier this morning, the wind chill in Minneapolis was negative 25. Uh, that cold air is going to swing towards the east coast. There will be a storm system that rides up the coast of nor'easter. Could see a ton of snow around New York. Uh, still some questions there, but we could see some pretty hefty totals up there in New York City. We'll see how that plays out. But here in Texas, we've got temperatures, current temperatures now, 42 Dallas, 50 here in San Antonio. And these are air temperatures now. So it's 7 in Chicago, 15 in Cleveland. And as we zoom in a little bit closer to Texas, below freezing in places like Midland, Lubbock, and Amarillo, those are also spots that are seeing some snow, at least some light snow around Lubbock. Most of it is starting to move out of Amarillo, but move towards uh, Oklahoma and there are winter weather advisories up there where uh, some of the snow is falling and that stretches all the, all the way back out into southeastern portions of New Mexico. We're not going to see any of that. It all stays to our north. Whole storm system works across the Red River there bringing more snow to places like Wichita Falls this evening. For us, we'll be watching some moisture streaming up out ahead of the, our next storm system. There is a small and I mean small window to get some showers late Thursday, early Friday. So we're looking at 2 a.m. Friday morning. 
shows a few showers around here. I don't think we see much as far as accumulation. It's all going to be very, very light. And then by Friday morning, some drier air starts to work in. We get some clearing by Friday afternoon. And I mentioned that great weekend. Boy, it does look awesome. 55 Thursday. There's a 30% chance of rain late Thursday into Friday. Breezy on Friday, 56, but sun in the afternoon. 63 Saturday, 67 in, on, sunny, on Sunday and sunny. Say that three times fast. Uh, <laughs> looks good. And then a chance of some showers and storms early on Monday. Another brief window for some rain. And it does look like it warms up as we head into February. Uh, maybe some 70s by Tuesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Sunny Sunday, sunny Sunday, sunny Sunday. All right, now you're showing me up. Sunny, <laughs> sunny and Sunday, Sunday and Sunday, sunny uh, Sunday. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You let out the challenge. We just. We did it. We just challenged. We did go serious. it. Speaking of challenge. Speaking of challenges. Yes, the Spurs beat the Rockets last night in their latest challenge. I mean, they should. The Rockets are dead last in the Western Conference. The Spurs victory was so easy. Most of the starters didn't even play in the fourth quarter. And immense college basketball. It appears Baylor is back on track. Coming up. Yeah, uh, I surprised myself a little bit sometimes. Uh, it's been a while since I had one of those, so um, felt good. Felt good. You know, fresh legs. I was in a hotel room for a while, as you know, so it's nice and recovered and uh, had a good one. Perfect timing. 30-year-old Doug McDermott still has hops. The three-point ace took his game inside last night in Big Board Sports. Spurs picked up a much-needed win at the last place Houston Rockets last night. Second quarter action, DeJounte Murray feeds Doug McDermott for that nasty slam dunk he was just talking about. McDermott scored 15 points in 25 minutes as you look one more time. Wow. Later in the second, Derek White passes to a wide-open Jakob Pertl. For an easy bucket, he had 18 points and nine rebounds in 21 minutes. Third quarter, Murray getting all fancy with his handles, works his way in for a basket off the window. He led the Spurs with 19 points, 10 assists. Spurs roll 134 to 104, playing aggressively from start to finish. Yeah, I think we're disappointed with the result against Philadelphia. So showed a little bit today. I think there was a little bit more urgency to us. Um, and yeah, we managed to find a rhythm early in the game and it really carried over for, for the rest of the game. Spurs will host the Memphis Grizzlies tonight, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Memphis is third best in the West. The Lakers, LeBron James had a couple of sweet slam dunks last night as well. The Brooklyn Nets, he steals the ball, then goes back and he pleases the crowd. <laughs> Very nice and he's not done. Later on, he anticipates the pass. Steals it and races back for two-hand flush. LeBron scored 33 to help the Lakers earn a big-time road win, 106 to 96. In Big 12 basketball, Baylor handled business at home last night against Kansas State. First half, LJ Cryer drives baseline and kicks it back to Matthew Meyer, and he goes above the rim. Meyer scored eight. Cryer led the Bears with 14 points, and number four Baylor takes it 74-49 for their third win in a row. Girls High School Hoops, District 28-6A, Brandeis and Johnson in a battle for playoff positioning last night. Broncos looking the rally late in the third. Alexis Parker for the hoop plus the foul. She had a team high at 34 points. Brandeis cuts the lead down the 13 midway through the fourth, but Johnson answers. Nice ball movement finds Sierra McDermott in the corner for three, and she hits it. Jaguars pull away to win at 79-61. Same district at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse, Churchill and Clark, late second quarter. Cougars starting defense to offense, Ariana Roberson with the block. Caitlin Whitlock picks up the loose ball and takes it the distance for the land, 37-21 Cougs. Then a few plays later, Whitlock returns the favor, finding Roberson with a long pass for the land. Clark stays perfect in district play, 66 to 35. Boys hoops now, District 28-5A, Harlandale hosts in Macomb. Third quarter, Indians Jeremiah Harrison drives baseline and finds Pedro Valenzuela for the easy layup. That makes an 11-point game. But the Cowboys answer right back. Dalen Gonzalez kicks it out to Donovan Macha for the corner three. Man, that's good. McCollum rolls 54 to 41. More highlights right now on our website, ksat.com. We're getting close to high school playoffs, right? Yeah, it's probably about two weeks left two weeks in the regular left. season, I think. They're looking a little less. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. And a designer in Colorado has been making dresses almost her entire life, but she only has about four years of experience, and that's because she's only nine years old. <laughs> How people are starting to take notice. That's coming up. A new vehicle could have some folks zooming past traffic. There's a catch, though. You'll need a pilot's license to drive it. We'll explain coming up in the next half hour. 
And it's not a trend you would think would go viral, but leave it to TikTok to spark interest in earwax. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at the weird ways people are cleaning out their ears and what one doctor says you should do instead of trying the trends at home. That's today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Vice President Kamala Harris in Honduras today attending the inauguration of President-elect Xiomara Castro. The former First Lady of Honduras, Castro, will become the nation's first female president. Harris has been tasked by President Joe Biden with overseeing diplomatic relations with the Northern Triangle countries, which also includes El Salvador and Guatemala. One of her main goals will be working with Castro to help address the root causes of migration to the U.S. southern border. Harris's visit is high profile because corruption and crime are prevalent in the area, and that's made securing partners there difficult for previous administrations. President Joe Biden warning there could be severe consequences if Russia invades Ukraine, including the possibility of personal sanctions against Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia has repeatedly insisted it won't attack, but in a show of force, Moscow conducting new military drills in the region. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz has the latest. Amid diplomatic efforts to de-escalate the crisis in Ukraine, tensions are rising between the U.S. and Russia. President Biden signaling 8,500 troops on heightened alert could deploy to Eastern Europe sooner rather than later. But repeating combat troops will not go into Ukraine, which isn't a NATO member. I may be moving some of those troops in the nearer term just because it takes time. And, uh, and again, it's not, it's not provocative. President Biden's also not ruling out personal sanctions against Russian President Putin if he orders an invasion of Ukraine. The Kremlin insists that won't happen. But new images show the Russian military conducting drills that include infantry units in the region. Ukraine's foreign minister tells ABC News the 100,000 Russian troops at the Ukrainian border are not enough for a full-scale invasion. What we currently see is uh, a scenario of destabilization of Ukraine. And that scenario is certainly imminent. It's already taking place. The U.S. and NATO allies aren't taking chances, sending more anti-tank missiles, rockets, grenade launchers and ammunition to Ukraine. The Ukrainians are ready and capable of defending their country. Meantime, diplomatic talks are underway in Paris between Germany, France, Russia and Ukraine, part of a broader attempt to defuse the tensions. Different allies are contributing in different ways in a way that is mutually reinforcing. The Kremlin says it's still awaiting a written response from the U.S. to its security demands. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that response could come this week. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And two more people are now in custody as the investigation continues into the hostage standoff in Colleyville near Dallas. Investigators say 44-year-old Malik Faisal Akram, a British national, died after holding four people hostage at Congregation Beth Israel during an 11-hour standoff earlier this month. UK counterterrorism investigators have been helping the U.S. authorities look into the incident, which is being treated as a hate crime and an act of terrorism. Last week, two other men were arrested in England. The incident has, of course, put Jewish communities across the United States on high alert. The, the Anti-Defamation League says attacks on Jewish people have been on the rise. The Coast Guard has recovered one body and is still looking for 38 other people who disappeared after their boat capsized off the coast of Florida. Crews found one survivor clinging to the overturned hull of that boat. Crews on at least four ships and five aircraft already scanned a large area about the size of New Jersey. The Coast Guard says the group of 40 left the island of Binami in the Bahamas Saturday evening in what they suspect was a human smuggling operation. The survivor told them none wore life jackets as that boat capsized in severe weather. Now to the brutal blast of winter. A deep freeze settling into the Midwest right now with wind chills making it feel well below zero. Here's ABC's Alex Perez in Chicago, which just experienced its coldest morning of the year there. 
Chicago pretty much feeling like an ice box today. The cold, bitter temperatures are moving in and really just parking themselves over a huge chunk of the country. Some parts of the Midwest waking up to temperatures that feel like 30 below zero. Right now here in Chicago, it feels like about 15 below zero, the coldest air of the season. Now I want you to see what this cold air is doing to Lake Michigan and the nearby harbors. Take a look behind me here and I want you to see it from above. Uh, the water completely frozen over in some areas, huge chunks of ice in other areas. Authorities are reminding people just how dangerous this cold air can be. They say you should limit your time outside. Warming centers are open and remember when it's this cold, frostbite can begin to set in in less than half an hour. And unfortunately, this cold air isn't going anywhere just yet. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. At least we don't have to deal with that. I know. I, I, we were just complaining about how cold it was this morning, but my goodness. I wasn't complaining. Oh, were you, well, I were, was. You I were. was okay. shivering. I was shivering. Shivering? Yes. Justin, I, I told you after my Colorado trip, I'll never complain about Texas winters. That's right. You did again. say that. Yeah, I feel Ever. bad for Alex, man. Those yeah. wind chills were so brutal this morning. Oh. Uh, let's take a look across the country right now. The temperatures have, quote unquote, warmed up a little bit there in Chicago, but it's seven at this hour. They were in negative t territory a little bit earlier this morning. It's 10 in Minneapolis, 11 in International Falls, one in Caribou, Maine. So you can see where the cold air is centered. And this cold air is really going to move east. So we don't feel much of it here in Texas. Now, it's, it's cool outside, but it's, it's not necessarily cold here in San Antonio. We've got 50 degrees right now. The colder temperatures are up in the Texas Panhandle today where it's 22 right now in Amarillo with some snow there. Uh, you can see that on the uh, radar and satellite that is pushing east. For us, it's just cloud cover and the dividing line has been uh, over our viewing area. To the west, it's been cloudy. To the east, the sun is out for some of our eastern counties today, but not here in San Antonio. Still cloudy at this hour and that's keeping temperatures right at 50 degrees. Dew point is at 39 and an east northeasterly breeze at about nine miles per hour. What can you expect today? Uh, I think clouds are going to stay here for a little while longer. I, it is possible we could see some sun this afternoon, which would boost temperatures into the mid to upper 50s, but still on the cool side and clouds build right back in tonight and we have an overcast day for tomorrow. A couple of chances of rain in the forecast and warmer temperatures too. Well, we're on that here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. And the person using this machine is not your typical fashionista. She may only be nine years old, but she's already reaching millions with her clothing designs. How she comes up with her creations, still ahead. And the Cowboys have something to brag about, actually, after that disappointing oh, loss to the 49ers. Their rookie linebacker getting recognized. Larry Ramirez with that coming up in sports. And imagine being stuck in traffic, but with a push of a button, your car grows wings and you can fly right out of it. It may not be a pipe dream how one country is clearing the futuristic vehicle for takeoff. Well, there's a look at an odd aircraft. It's called the Air Car, and it just received a certificate of airworthiness from Slovakia's Transport Authority. Absolutely. This Air Car has gone through 70 hours of test flights and more than 200 takeoffs and landings. And during those test flights, the car took off and landed without a pilot even touching the flight controls. However, you would still need a pilot's license to operate, which I'm fully for. Recently, it was flown between two cities in Slovakia, and its developers hope that it'll be commercially available within the next 12 months. There are a few flying cars around in development around the world, including one by a Dutch company that's already taking pre-orders. That's so cool. Mm, not sure about all no? that. All right. No. Well, Chanel is known as an iconic high fashion brand, and its latest runway show featured something very, very unexpected. A horse hit the catwalk with one of the models. The creature trotted around the runway during Chanel's Paris show and even went at a full gallop with a model taking the reins. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, sticking with fashion, now to a young fashion designer in Colorado making waves of her own. This nine-year-old girl's creations are going viral on TikTok. A hallway in her home is her runway, and she designs her dresses from the comfort of her bedroom. Her mom says Kia has been designing clothes almost her whole life. She says she's been sewing since she was five. So how does she come up with her designs? I basically just start pinning on my mannequin and then just roll with it, whatever idea comes to my mind. Just roll oh, with it. I yeah, like that. I just, <laughs> just have my mannequin here. On average, Kia makes a dress a day, and she's not only, she's not looking to go pro anytime soon, but she plans on making a quilt of all her dresses when she outgrows them. Good for her. I like that starting young. And some students here in Texas are making history. They're part of the state's only Space Force Junior ROTC program. Last year, Space Force selected Klein ISD in the Houston area, and the new JROTC program became official just yesterday. Space Force started two years ago, and it's the newest military branch watches weather, weather patterns, cyber attacks, and what happens in the skies. Students will learn not only about Space Force, but STEM programs to help them in whatever careers they choose for the future. We've got to look at things a little differently than how I grew up, um, how we all grew up. And so it's taking a different approach to be bold, to have the courage to tackle problems in a different mindset. So far, there are 10 of these programs across the country. It's not clear what the students will be doing. However, Space Force says participants will focus on leadership, aerospace science, and fitness and wellness. Man, I hope these kids realize that they're so lucky to have these to have programs. That. Justin probably would have been a member of the Space Force Junior yeah. ROTC. You know what, that's pretty cool. I'll, although, I, I must admit, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it, but that's, that's where it's going, right? I mean, that's we got to prepare. Things in the future. Ah, okay, so 50 degrees so far today. 48 was the low this morning. Not much to change between the high and the low. Cloud cover tends to do that to you. It keeps temperatures pretty steady. Averages are 64 and 42. Records are 87 and 20 set back in 1975 and way back in 1897. We've mentioned a couple of rain chances in the forecast, plus a big storm system for the East Coast. We'll take a look coming up. Is this cold or is it chilly? I would say cold <clears throat> for a Texan. For a Texan. But it's good chilly weather if you like chili. Oh, yeah. Chili and like some soup or something. All good points. Thank I you. completely agree with all that. Uh, yes, it, it is uh, chilly. Also, you know, we need some rain. It, it's been a while since we've had any rain. I know it doesn't really affect us all that much this time of year. They, you know, winters typically are some of our drier months. But we're going to get to the point here when we get into spring that we need some rain. We've been below average last couple of months, and uh, there's just not a whole lot in the forecast. I am happy to say there's a couple of chances coming up. But they're not great chances. So let's uh, first start with what's going on outside. Time lapse shows us that uh, we've had cloudy skies all morning. Not much to see there. We didn't have any fog or anything like that. It's just been cloudy. 50 degrees right now. East northeast really winds at about nine miles per hour. And there is a satellite picture which uh, really sort of tells the story. Uh, the clearing line, the edge of the clouds, sitting right over uh, Comal County, stretching over towards Guadalupe County and down into Wilson County, but it has made very little progress to the west. So that means we're going to stay cloudy here in San Antonio probably another couple of hours. Will this line move west? I think it will a little bit today, but San Antonio is going to be pretty close to the dividing line, and it's possible that we only see a few peaks of sun this afternoon. With all that being said, temperatures Really are pretty steady around the area. 52 in New Braunfels, 53 in Gonzales. Those are places seeing sun at this hour. 58 in Kennedy. Cloudy skies though for places like Rock Springs, Uvalde, Hondo, down the Criso Springs. Also sitting in the mid 50s right now. Uh, forecast for today here in San Antonio. We'll keep it mostly cloudy. Again, maybe some sun a little bit later today. 57, the forecast high. Northeasterly winds. A little breezy time to time, from time to time. 5 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, dew points. Uh, they've been pretty low. We've got dew points in the 30s and 40s. And as you look forward in time, there's not really a big rise in dew points. In fact, they come down some behind the front uh, early Friday. But they do build back some by early next week. And that's a little encouraging because we'll have a storm system coming in on Monday. It's a small window, but the hope is that we'll get maybe some uh, rain early on Monday. Showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms too. So that's something to look for. As we look at the uh, big picture across the country, 
Not a lot there, at least not yet. We showed you the cold up north, very cold air across the Great Lakes. We have some snow, as we pointed out earlier, around the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma, and then a little bit of rain across parts of Florida. So let's jump into the forecast here. We get a piece of energy that comes down the plains, and this pushes into our area by early Friday morning. This is that first chance of rain I spoke of, mainly in the form of light showers. It won't add up to much, and the window to get this is probably midnight to about sunrise Friday. And then after that, the clouds push south, we clear out, and most of Texas is going to see sun over the weekend. Now that same piece of energy pulls east and rides up the east coast as a nor'easter, and this is going to be a big time storm. Now depending on the track, and there's still a lot of questions there, there could be anywhere from a few inches of snow in New York to feet of snow in New York. As you might imagine, if they do get quite a bit of snow, uh, there is a domino effect when it comes to travel and airplanes and stuff like that. So just something to watch. But the Northeast uh, could get uh, hit pretty hard by that storm. Here's our seven day forecast. 57 degrees today, 55 on Thursday with cloudy skies. 30% chance of rain, mainly late uh, Thursday, early Friday. And then clearing Friday afternoon and breezy 56, 63 Saturday and sunny, 67 on Sunday and sunny. And uh, we'll get some chances again, another chance of rain early on Monday, 30% chance of shower or storm, 68 Monday, 73 on Tuesday, guys. Man, I'm still stuck on New York. Hot feet of snow? Possible. Possibly. Possibly. I yes. don't even imagine I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Thank you, Justin. We'll be right back after the break. Spurs got an easy 134-104 win at the Houston Rockets last night. So easy starters as Jonte Murray, Jakob Pertl, and Kelvin Johnson didn't play in the fourth quarter. Murray scored 19 points with 10 assists and 5 rebounds in 24 minutes. And Murray is certainly playing lights out this season, especially the month of January. He's averaging 23 points, 8.5 boards, and 9.7 assists per game this month. Last night he had 10 of the Spurs' 38 assists. Murray and defense were both key in the Spurs' win last night. Yeah, it starts with him, obviously. I think uh, more importantly, it starts with our defense, um, you know, especially with these guys. And, you know, they like to get up and down. Um, you have to get back in transition against them. And you can get some quick stops and run back at them. So that's kind of what we did. And uh, that was the emphasis today in shoot around. So we, we executed that very well. Yeah, he really can. I mean, sky's the limit for him. You know, I've played with a lot of point guards. And, you know, he's, he's grown into being one of those guys, you know, an all-star type player. Um, you know, he's he's an unselfish guy that just keeps getting better and better. And he's, he's a great leader. And, you know, we're, we're lucky to have him. Spurs are back at it tonight at 730 when they host the 32 and 17 Memphis Grizzlies. The Spurs today recall Joshua Primo from the G League Austin Spurs. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons was voted the Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year by the Pro Football Writers of America. That's after he posted a Cowboys rookie franchise record with 13 sacks and tied for the lead in the NFL with 20 tackles for loss, the most by a Cowboys linebacker since 2017. Parsons won the NFL's Defensive Rookie of the Month in both November and December, the first time a Cowboys player has won back-to-back -back Player of the Month awards on defense or offense. This also makes him one of the top candidates for Defensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. Only one player has ever won both as a rookie, and that was Lawrence Taylor in 1981. After 16 years, Sean Payton has decided to step away, uh, step aside as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, but in a press conference held in the Mardi Gras City, he stopped short of saying he is retired. You know, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones is licking his chops. Payton still has three years remaining on his latest contract extension that he signed in 2019. An emotional Payton was asked, why now? I just felt like this season wasn't, it was challenging for everyone, but man, I felt like it was time. I felt like it was time, you know, I kind of knew maybe heading into training camp this might, but you don't, you, you, you know, you don't share that with anyone. You think, well, let's see how the season goes and we're working hard and, and I felt the time was right for me. 
And finally in sports, Pennsylvania's Hershey Bears set a new world record with the teddy bear toss. Officials for the minor league hockey team say fans toss more than 52,000 stuffed animals onto the ice at the Giant Center after the team scored its first goal Saturday night. It breaks the record of over 45,000 stuffed animals collected back in 2019. The toys will be no donated to various charitable organizations. Look at that. That had that to take so some cool. some work to get them big pandas over the, <laughs> yeah. the glass. It does, right? That's like <laughs> effort. <laughs> that is too cool. cool. It is. Thank you, Larry. A lot of boxes. All right, downtown. Yep. What yes. are we getting into today? I tell you, we are celebrating food with food. I like that. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. And a couple of restaurants uh, really got something big to talk about, especially. Yes, of course, Bill Corbett, executive chef at the Hayden is here. And your restaurant has been kind of put in the national spotlight. Tell us about getting that call. Yeah, uh, we were just sitting around the restaurant one day and we got a random phone call from somebody asking if we would like to be able to shut down the restaurant to be on their TV show. and. Before we knew it, we figured out what show it was, and I was like, let's do it. <laughs> and they're going to be on tonight, and there's a special dish that they are making up for that, which raises the question, what TV show would you want to be on? Yes, let us know mm. at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Another local restaurant mm -hmm. celebrating a big anniversary is Green Vegetarian, and Mike Baird is here. So how many years now? It'll be 15 years now. Okay, and it's not California Vegetarian. No, this we're from here. This, so food, this yeah. is hearty Texas style food. Also, there is something that has been missing in town for a while. Oh. Just wait on that. That he is going to be bringing back. And oh my goodness gracious, you probably had one of these things. Yeah, you're going to love the news Ooh, on this. Wait till you see that. And of course, the biggest football game of the year is just a few weeks away. And we've got an easy recipe from Tony Satchery's that'll make you the MVP of the watch party. And all those great spices. And then, of course, after all that, yeah, we got to talk about working out and be good. So we got a good <laughs> workout program for it. And Jen's got a really yummy cup of coffee on top of that. That and more coming up on I Say Live.